places I haven't been before, and skiing places I haven't skied before. So going to Patagonia on a skiing road trip allowed me to do both. Nothing was planned before I left the United States, but Adam's my friend and he was in Chile and I trusted him with whatever would happen. So when I got to Santiago, we sat down and finally tried to decide what we were going to do, because somehow that hadn't really come up in discussions yet. Pretty quickly, we decided that our goal was to drive from Santiago to Punta Arenas and ski as much as we could between them. All we knew is that there were a lot of volcanoes, a lot of mountains, and that in order to ski them successfully, we were going to need a vehicle that could get us 5,000 kilometers to the very tip of South America. One that would allow us to sleep, eat, cook, and live in. We didn't know where we were going to be sleeping on this road trip, so at the car rental agency, we made sure to ask for the most discreet, inconspicuous van that they had to offer. This is what we got. Come on in. There's three modes to van life. You have driving, chilling and eating, and sleeping. Pretty easy transformation allows you to cook, read, or hang out at a table inside the van. Now the van's in sleep mode. In the middle compartment, we have like our clothes bags. The front compartments are our food storage. We have uh, this guy, which is how we listen to all of our music. There are exactly six songs on here, and we have driven exactly 4,500 kilometers. We were starting our road trip around September 18th, Chile's Independence Day. Because of that, we made sure to get a little uh, patriotic flair. We've got some tools and stuff. We had to put that guy to use on the beach. On the left side of the trunk, we have our boot closet. Now, nothing's better after a long day of skiing than taking off your sweaty boots, pulling out your liners, dripping wet, and shoving them right next to all of your food that you're gonna cook that night. <laughs> I think when a lot of people go on road trips, they end up bringing everything except the kitchen sink. Well, not us. Welcome to our second kitchen and dining room. All of these things are great, but they're not really any use unless you have a beautiful place to use them. While driving through Patagonia, we made sure to always find the most pristine camp spots available. Fortunately, Chile and Argentina offered a plethora of wonderful beachside, mountainside, and riverside campsites. Not only did I climb and ski some of the most amazing runs of my entire life, but we never knew where we were going to sleep that night and we never knew what we were going to ski next. We skied spring corn on Antuco, and we skied winter powder on Monkey Mai. On top of Via Rica, we looked into a huge steaming crater because we were skiing from the tops of active volcanoes, and we drove for days and days on end, looking up at steep mountains until we were finally looking up at Fitzroy. I flew into Santiago with no expectations, and 5,000 kilometers and one month later, I came out of Punta Arenas with the best trip of my life. I'm Brody. I invite you to join me in watching a four-episode series about our road trip through Patagonia. I'm going to watch it, and I was there. Like, I was literally there the entire, the whole time. So I left summer expecting to ski in the spring, but it was actually winter and it felt like fall. I was pretty seasonally confused.